Okay, I'm not perfect. Actually, I'm far from perfect. I'm confused on where I am with God. Has he forgiven me? I repented. I love Jesus. How do I know if I'm really saved? Hey guys, welcome back to Rinda's channel. You're with Rinda Boyd. I'm starting this new Christian girl chat segment with you guys. I felt completely inspired from TikTok because I get so many questions daily, honestly, hourly. Honestly, like I feel like every minute of every single day, I'm getting question after question after question after question after question about so many biblical things, spiritual things, Christian things in general. But I feel like I get this question the absolute most. How do I know if I'm saved so today i want to answer that for you guys i want to make sure all of you guys understand to the t especially like my young adults and like teens who may be watching like if you are struggling right now um with this question and you have this question in mind maybe every day or whenever you see spiritual videos coming across your for you page or on instagram and you're like god i really want to make sure i'm good with you like i think i'm good with you but i don't really know so yeah i'm going to tell you how you really know that you're saved number one you have accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. You have to know in your heart and believe that Jesus is Lord. John 14 and 6 says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Jesus is saying nobody can come into heaven and meet the Father and dwell in the Father's house unless you accept me because I died on the cross for your sins. John 3 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life or everlasting life. You need to understand that if you believe that Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior, you are saved. Like you have to really be able to say, God, I really believe that you died on the cross for me because that first and foremost solidifies your faith in him and your oneness with him and your love for him. It just solidifies your salvation in a really clear cut way. Honestly, God wants to make it clear cut. He said, there's no other way. And I'm going to tell you today that there is no other way to heaven no other gods come before or above Jesus okay even God the father himself put Jesus's name above his own because of what he did for us hallelujah hallelujah number two you have repented of your sins so here's the thing with that if you have repented for your transgressions if you have repented for your iniquity the sins you commit daily and you've sincerely repented before God, you are forgiven. Thus, you are saved. <laughs> you know what I mean? If God says he forgives you, he forgives you. And no need to keep asking, what if he doesn't forgive this? What if he doesn't forgive this? God has made it specifically clear in the Bible, in his word, what is the unforgivable sin? And that is blaspheming the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit. If you have not done that, I don't think you need to be worrying, okay? You need to just focus on the fact that you are forgiven because you have repented. There's no sin that God can't or won't forgive besides the unforgivable sin seriously you don't have to really overthink it like god is like i forgive you you need to forgive yourself you need to understand that i forgive you so you can move forward because god is just such a forgiving god i think we constantly put god in this box like we need to stop limiting him and putting him inside this box and understand that he is god he is not human he doesn't have a carnal mind like we do he's not conditional like us humans can be we kind of sort of limit our love for people as far as they take us Sometimes God does not do that. His love doesn't change for us and his forgiveness doesn't change for us. Not at all. So understand that you are forgiven after you've repented. So repent, move forward. Don't look back. Acts 3 and 19 literally says, repent, therefore turn back that your sins may be blotted out. I'm just saying, he's blotted them out. No need to worry about them. You've repented. That's what a saved person does. Number three, when you have accepted the Holy Spirit, you have to understand that the Holy Spirit is God's spirit being sent out. The Holy Spirit is really that connection that completely connects us with God in a supernatural way to where we can feel God in ways that we wouldn't be able to without the Holy Spirit and hear God in ways we wouldn't be able to without the Holy Spirit and love and speak and just be and mimic the ways of God without the Holy Holy Spirit, you have to understand how serious God takes the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is no joke. The Holy Spirit is that just compass that we need in life, especially as Christians. Like we don't realize how important the Holy Spirit is until we realize it's the Holy Spirit that gave us that intuition and that instinct from time to time and that voice from time to time and that courage from time to time and everything about our being as Christians. Like it's really from the Holy Spirit, positive things, of course. So everything that is 
good and everything that is well, everything that is righteous, not just good, that's just so basic, but righteous and holy and wisdom filled is really from the Holy Spirit. You gotta understand why that there's a scripture that says if you blaspheme against the Holy Spirit that's unforgiven, you don't play with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is God's one, just like Jesus. That's why they call it the Trinity. And people wanna say, oh, the Trinity's not in the Bible. That's the name of the Holy Three, okay? They are three in one, okay? And you have to understand the dynamic of that in depth. And I'm not gonna sit here and try to prove to you why the Trinity is a real thing. The Trinity is what it is, it's real, and it's holy, and it's truly who God is. So you have God the Father, Jesus the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is what really just brings that connection and oneness with his people on earth. And when you are baptized, you're baptized to receive the Holy Spirit for a reason. It's important to be baptized. I definitely recommend being baptized. So when you accept the Holy Spirit, you're really accepting God on another level, on a very intimate level that in another way solidifies your relation to him and salvation. Romans 8 and 16 says, the Spirit himself witnesses with our spirit that we are children of God. Let that sink in. Number four, when you share the genuine love of Christ. 1 John 3 and 14 says, we know that we have passed out of death into life because we love our brothers. Nobody can be more genuinely loving than Jesus. I don't care how loving and sweet you are. He is the most genuine, kind, soul, spirit, being there is. And that is from him. Love is God and God is love. There wouldn't be love without God and God wouldn't be God without love. Does that make sense? So when we're sharing and we're spreading love, then that means that we're really helping one another up. The same way Jesus will help others in love and share truth in love and share insight and wisdom in love. I can't explain how many people wouldn't probably want to even understand God or want to come to God if there wasn't love involved because it's really his love that enamors us on a whole different level whole different level okay and the more we understand God and see God the more we naturally love others and other people will be able to tell through your actions and through the way you convey things and show authenticity to people they will know that person is a man or a woman of God because of the love in their heart it's so inexplicable and it's just so supernatural to the point where it's like that is truly a Christian people can call themselves Christians but could be the most nastiest person on earth like the most most nasty hearted person and it's not gonna make you think well they're Christians so it is what it is like that's just how that Christian is no you're gonna think like they need to reevaluate their relationship with God or something's not adding up or they need to not even call themselves Christian because they're so hateful it's not right it's not giving it's not Christian like it's not godly first and foremost most of all it's just not godly when you're showing love you're representing Christ and that should just be natural first John 3 and 14 says above all keep loving one another earnestly so since love covers a multitude of sins. So you have to understand, your love even covers a multitude of sin. How powerful is that? Love has got to be a lot more powerful than we think. I mean, God is focused more on your love than your sin. Hello? If anyone says, I love God and hates his brother, he is a liar. For he who does not love his brother whom he has seen cannot love God whom he has not seen. And this commandment we have from him, whoever loves God must also love one another. And then the fifth one, understanding that the Bible just says so. The Bible says so. We have to stop second guessing God. I am so tired and not in a rude way. Like I am sick and tired of y'all. No, I'm talking about on my TikTok, like the comments. I'm so tired of so many of you second guessing your salvation, second guessing God's love for you, second guessing the assurance of salvation, second guessing God's forgiveness. Like stop second guessing God. God is like, I gave you the gift of salvation so long ago. Like it's all the way back there. Go get it. Go pick it up. Um, It's a free package. Like you can take it. It's okay. A lot of you are just so afraid to take the free gift of salvation and it's like free. God has no problem giving it to you. Like he's so happy to give you the gift of salvation. He has given it to us so we can dwell with him for eternity and be on one accord with him in his house for eternity. That is the best gift of all. You have to understand what the Bible says. I mean, the verses, John 3, 16, John 5, 13. This is why it's so important to read your word and spend time with God from time to time. Like I say every day, we need to dwell on the word every day, but I'm not even perfect at that. Like I'm trying to get better at spending time in my word every day, but mine be here. But um, 
<laughs> it is imperative that we often spend time in the word because the more we read scripture, the more scripture dwells in our hearts, instills in our hearts, um, and in our minds, and our souls, and our spirit. And we dwell on it for so long, and we've instilled it for so long that it just completely turns into a bucket load of faith and something that we truly believe. And then the more you think about scripture, you're like, man, God did say this. God did say in verse this, this, and this. And, and I'm just going to believe and stand on his word because his word is true his word abides and lives forever his word will never change it will never end ever i don't care how many people say scientists or people changed his word god's word will never change and if it's something that is taking from the word or adding to the word and it's not of god then it's not the word it's something else that somebody made but god's word is god's word and it will always be god's word okay so don't get it twisted scripture does not lie god put it in his word for a reason he wants you to know that this is true this is what i'm saying you're gonna second guess god's word that's actually disrespectful you're gonna keep saying god i don't think you saved me i don't really think i don't really know god i don't believe that you really gave me this gift like he literally says it he says it for a reason he writes it so you can know and you can see and you can dwell on it and believe and keep it in your heart and walk with that knowledge and wisdom day to day with the smile on your face no matter what comes your way knowing that I am saved. I am a child of God. I don't care what happens in this life. God said so, so I believe so and I know so. And I love God and God loves me. So yeah, those are ways that you know that you are saved. Well, I hope that made it easy for you to understand because it's true. And if you got all that down, that's all in you. You understand that? What are we still here for? Stop second guessing your salvation. You are saved and I understand you're not perfect. None of us are perfect, literally. Who in the Bible really was perfect besides Jesus? Let's be real. Nobody was perfect. We all have faults. We all have issues. We all have mistakes that we've made or are gonna continue to make, but it doesn't change our love for God. So if you can accept that, then you should be able to go on with your life knowing that I am saved. Say it with me. I am saved. I have accepted Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. I am saved. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video and I'm going to do so many more Christian girl talks with you guys. And I'm so excited. I have so many topics written down because you guys have given me a plethora of topics, questions to answer. Yeah. But make sure you're watching my other videos with We Three. We have a whole little thing going on where we do challenges and have fun. And I think you'll really enjoy us as a fun YouTube group because me, my sister, and my sister's boyfriend, who's really like my brother, we all love Jesus and we're all Christians. And I know some of you have probably been looking for some really fun, cool Christian YouTubers. That's us. Yep, that's me. Like we have so many fun, cool challenges. We're just really funny and cool down to earth people. We're not perfect, but we love Jesus. We love God and we have a lot more content coming for you soon so go ahead and watch those other videos if you haven't already of we three that's our group name so and you guys are called we saints for all my supporters you're the we saints god's little saints little angels little beauties just thought it was cute so love you guys have a blessed night day evening whatever 